magnificent circuses that everybody sent yesterday loved it really hope you're going to enjoy this today uh, we've got matilda matilda on a pile of books uh, i don't know about you she's one of my favorite royal doll characters i think she's absolutely magnificent so let's get to drawing matilda <laughs> we're going to start with an oval for the head and think about where you want it don't go too far down the page there's not much above Matilda in the picture but there is a lot below because we've got the pile of books so I'm going to come just down a little bit like that I'm going to put in my oval and it's on a very slight slant you'll see that when you pause when you pause um to look at the the, the drawing you'll see that it's just a very slight slant so we're going to start with that and then here we've got two tiny marks which are going to form her neck and then we'll take it out into a triangle. I know you're thinking she, there is no triangle in that finished picture but it's just a matter of dividing up the shapes and splitting them up. So we've got that like that. Now if we carry on that line down there this will form the edge of the book so we'll carry on the line down to about there and then we're going to take it in here. So these are just our very first marks. So make sure you keep your pencil really, pencil marks incredibly light, lighter than I'm doing, um, just so that you can rub them out later because we're gonna be adapting this. So that's our first shape. So when you pause it, you can just look at the way these lines, just think about where the shape is in relation to the other lines around it. And we're gonna come in now, think about where that triangle is, come to about there. And we're going to put in the bottom of her skirt, which is just two lines like that and down. And then her incredibly stick-like legs here. So this is based on those amazing illustrations by Quentin Blake. And he has this brilliant um, style, which is so instantly recognisable. So they are the first few shapes. So if you pause it and just get those in. Okay, so we're just going to start smoothing out some of these shapes. Now that triangle one there, take it and just bring it round so it comes around the edge of the, what's going to be the book. And here, bringing that book up. Now, if you see that as being the line, when you pause, you'll see that put in as a red dotted line on, on my guide. I'm going to come up from here and take it down so it's like the edge of a book. And we're going to have a line there. And then this is the spine of the book. So we've got a curve there and a curve there there and that will go into the spine so it's just about breaking it down now this one we're going to take that line up quite a bit higher from the line we'd put in so you can rub that one out then and you can rub that one out and that's going to give us the shape of our huge book that she's holding and from that you can start putting in the lines which will form the pages of the book there just very lightly You'll see they come up and they'll change things. Now the hands, people really fret and worry about hands. Lots of great artists like Da Vinci and Michelangelo practice them for hours and hours, but here we're just gonna do real Quentin Blake style hands. So it's just a few little marks like that. And then up here like that, one, two, three. And then coming down, we're gonna put in the what's gonna become the pile of books. And I just want you to start with a line under her legs there and take it down. And we're gonna put in this sort of diamond, wonky diamond shape, which will form the, the top book. And if we go down from there with a line, and then across with a line, and there. That is just gonna be the second stage. So you can see she's starting to come together. So if you just pause there now, and get in those few shapes. Right, we'll work on her face now. This is just a, a really a few little lines here because we've got all of the key shapes in. So we're just going to take her hair down there, her long hair there, and I'm not even going to give it a top. I'm just going to do a few little lines around and I'm going to do the same there, down there to join it. And I'm actually going to rub out the top of that circle we did because we're going to put in her fringe you'll see when we do the pen marks at the end now the face is so simple start with a smile and it kind of echoes the shape of the bottom of the face there so 
it's lower on that side and higher on that side. So there's her little smile coming in. And go up to about halfway and you're going to do a tiny little mark like that. Then we're going to take it up like that. And if we pop in two eyes here, one, two, and suddenly we can see it is Matilda. So we'll take her neck out here and down to there. And we're going to put in the top, what is the top of her dress. And we've got that line coming down. We've already got the rest of it in. So suddenly we really do have our little Matilda. So we'll pop her shoes in. Those are so sweet. I have really enjoyed drawing this and looking at the illustrations of Quinton Blake. He's such a genius. Here we go, we'll take them out. And then we've got these little shoelaces that come up there like that. Now, as we start working on our books, you really don't have to copy this exactly. Just pop in the shape of a spine of a book and it being open like that and the end. And then you can just keep doing that shape. Now, if you think back, if you've been with us right since the first daily draw, the what second one we did was Hedwig standing on a pile of books. And you could just copy what you did for that. Um, and we, we sent the most amazing ones, really incredible ones with everybody's different book titles on. So you could do exactly the same with Matilda. So here we go. And I'll just pop one book in there. And then I'm going to take it actually further down so that I can finish on a really big book there at the bottom. So all you're thinking about is the curves on each side. So if you pause and get the final bits of the drawing in, what I am going to do is just go back here. Can you see I've put a very straight line for the skirt? I'm going to take it in and make it so it's more of a wave there and down there like that. Now I am going to paint my Matilda. Um, but you, if you've only got pencils or crayons, whatever, you colour it in if you like, or stay with us and let me show you how we can start painting it. So I'm going to use uh, watercolour pencils on mine. Um, if you have a go later at the George's Marvellous Medicine one, you'll see we've used some uh, palette paints as well. And you could do exactly the same with this. You could use your palette paints. I'm just going to demonstrate using the, um, the watercolour pencils. I'm going to start by doing a hair. It was really hard for me to work out what colour it was. It, it seemed almost grey black on the illustrations that I was looking at. So I'm going for a super dark brown here. Um, and once I've put that in, I'm going to just very lightly, can see, I'm going to turn that to paint and I'm going to come down and I'm just going to flip between different colours as we do this. Um, now, we've had people sending us so many lovely ideas, so thank you to all the people who said some roll doll and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, it really is. These, these illustrations are just so magnificent. They really are iconic. So I really hope you're enjoying doing this as we all find our way through the lockdown. So that's the little bit of hair. And now I'm going to use this red one here. So I'm going to go around the edge of the book and the edge of her fingers because I don't want to catch her fingers in this. Now you can easily just do this with watercolour paint because we're going to bring the, de the details together at the end with a pen. So I'll just I want to have some... I'm putting, essentially just putting pigment down there on the paper. I might use a slightly bigger brush for this, just for speed. Here we go. And you can see how that quickly that changes it, isn't it? Just amazing. Such a good, easy, neat way to paint without making a big old mess. If you want to make a bit more of a mess though, make sure you have a look at the Junior George one. This is a bit more opportunity for really experimenting with paint. So there we go, that's the book in. And now I'm gonna do a couple of the purple books here. So I'm just gonna go round the shoes because they'll keep those white, round the edge of the book. Then I'll cover pretty loosely there. And I'll do that one there as well. In a purple. I've still got a bit of water on my brush, but also I've got the red 
pigment. So when you're using these watercolour pencils, it's really important that between colours that you make sure that your brush is clean. Otherwise, you'll have the pigment from the last paint colour on your brush. So there we go. And I'm going to take the red one again. I'll just go on the last book there. Then, just so that these paints don't rub in together, what I'm going to do is just let this dry for a minute or two. Because there's not much water on it, really won't take long for it to dry. So I'll let it pull, I'll pause this, let it dry for a minute or two, and then I'll come back and finish them off. Okay, so we're going to start with creating a little flesh colour for um, Matilda. And um, to get this sort of pale pinky look that I'm looking for here, I'm just going to use a tiny bit of yellow ochre watercolour pencil. You can see it's, I've barely put any, and then a tiny bit of red, hardly any at all. We did this for the pirate, if you remember. And when I go like that, can you see? It's just mixing in this little it's pale, um, very pale flesh colour. So I'm just going to go there. The key is not to put too much in and on the hands and on the leg. And with the red, I'm only going to put in a tiny bit there. Because that will all mix in. And then if I take my brush here, just like I did on the piece of paper there, and you can see Got to be careful not with not to have too much of the red because it turns super pink. Can you see it's just colouring, slightly colouring the paper. I can do that. I'll do the same with the legs. Right, and they've come down now to the books. Again, remember Hedwig, do them however you want and you could put in book titles. What do you think Matilda would read? I think, didn't she read absolutely everything in the library? Wasn't that the whole... Yeah, did she not read all the children's books, books and, and then stuff? started on all the adult books? It's a bit like you, it's a bit like Elizabeth. She does a, she's a bit like that. Right, okay. We'll put in the yellow as well. We'll turn both those to paint. Now we've only got one tiny little bit of painting left on this, which is going to be her dress and then what I'm going to do I think the key to this sort of illustrative style is um is finishing it off with a pen and I'm going to use a fine liner pen but you could use whatever you have in the house to be honest a, a black barrow or a very thin black felt tip would do just as well so but make sure you get her dress color in that really finishes it off and I want that to be quite dark so I'm going to put more pigment on the paper there with that. And up here, I've got it coming underneath there. And then going so it's the top of the book. It starts to make more sense of her, I feel, once the dress colour's gone in. You can really see how it's supposed to look. So we'll just go there like that. And the same here. And then what I'm going to do is leave it to dry for a minute. And then come back and show you, talk to you a little bit about using your pen to make a really loose illustrative style with the Matilda. Okay, so I was really looking at um, the style of these illustrations and what happens is it seems to be quite a rapid movement of pen. So I'm going to keep my pen moving quite quickly there and I'll just go over the pen marks that I put in earlier. But then with the hair, so you've got a few little marks here and what would be a fringe, some more solid marks in the hair, but it's lots of sort of quick, loose marks all over. And if you've got the Matilda book, take it out. If you've got the one with these illustrations in and you could do more illustrations, you could even have a Matilda project. Um, whilst you're doing your homeschooling, have a little look at Quentin Blake's amazing illustrations in all his books and they'd be a lovely project to do whilst you're at home studying his style. And so I'm going to put in bits there. And as you come round the books, I'm not going to do it all. I'm just going to just show you how fast, I just wanted to show you how fast I'm going to keep the pen moving to get this sketchy style. Don't forget to put the shoelaces in. I think they're so cute. And coming round and building up the books. So really, that's it. Have some fun with your pen when you get to this bit. 
and keep the pen moving nice and fast. And I hope you really enjoyed that. enjoyed that if you fancy a bit more doll have a look at what we did with the juniors which was george's marvelous medicine you could do that one too why not let's just have a roll doll wednesday uh, tomorrow we're going to be back and it's going to be draw with the grandparents day so we want you to remind grannies granddads aunties uncles whoever you've been doing it with your family to make sure that they tune in too and that they can then um show you what they've been doing and elizabeth's going to be back tomorrow doing that and she has got a really really exquisite um drawing of a bluebell which is bluebells have just stopped will be starting to come into flower very soon so it's a it's a perfect spring draw with the grandparents we will see you tomorrow